As physiotherapists, it's essential to be aware of acute syndesmotic injuries as a differential diagnosis in patients with lateral ankle sprains. It requires longer recovery times and more treatments. Delayed diagnosis may result in impingement of scar tissue, chronic ankle instability, heterotopic ossification, or osteoarthritis further down the line. You are here to learn how to recognize these early on and provide the best treatment. Download the free PhysioTutors app now and become the best clinician you can be. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. For this video, I'll combine these four papers to give an overview of the diagnosis and treatment of syndesmotic injuries. Syndesmotic injuries refer to trauma-related injuries to the complex of ligaments that connect the tibia and fibula, including the anterior, inferior, tibiofibular ligament, the interosseous ligament, and the posterior, inferior, tibiofibular ligament. These injuries are a common differential diagnosis in patients presenting with lateral ankle sprains and can have a significant impact on the healing process and long-term outcomes. Early recognition of syndesmotic injuries is crucial for physiotherapists as these injuries often require different treatment approaches than a typical ankle sprain. Delayed recognition and treatment can result in inappropriate or inadequate management leading to persistent symptoms and potential long-term complications. Syndesmotic injuries are commonly caused by high impact trauma, such as falls from a height or motor vehicle accidents, or by excessive external rotation with hyperdorsiflexion of the ankle joint. These mechanisms can result in sprains or even ruptures of the ligaments in the syndesmotic complex. Isolated syndesmotic injuries are relatively uncommon, so be aware of potential fractures, associated ligament ruptures, bone bruises, osteochondral lesions, or soft tissue injuries. The diagnosis of syndesmotic injuries includes a thorough history and physical exam, as well as imaging tests such as x-rays, CT scans, MRI scans, or ultrasound to confirm the presence of a syndesmotic injury and to rule out other potential causes of pain and instability in the ankle joint. During the physical exam, assess the pain's range of motion, stability, and pain in the affected joint. Special tests such as the squeeze test or the external rotation stress test may be performed to evaluate the integrity of the syndesmotic complex further. When a syndesmotic injury is suspected, imaging is recommended. In terms of classification, many models have been proposed. Currently, there is yet to be a consensus on what classification to use. As a broad guide, you can divide them into stable and unstable joints, and isolated and non-isolated injuries. In terms of imaging, x-rays can provide information about the position and alignment of the ankle joint, while CT scans and MRI scans can provide a more detailed information about the ligaments and surrounding soft tissue. MRI has excellent sensitivity and specificity for visualizing syndesmotic injuries, although an arthroscopy remains the gold standard. An important finding during an x-ray is diastasis, it happens when the tibia and fibula move apart in weight-bearing. This can be present after a syndesmotic injury, resulting in an unstable joint. To assess this appropriately, a unilateral weight-bearing film is preferred. However, patients may not tolerate this in the early phase. If there is no evidence of fractures, instability or diastasis, and the deltoid ligaments remain intact, conservative management is often the first-line treatment. This may include rest, ice, compression, and elevation of the affected joint. However, recent ankle sprain guidelines do not recommend rice anymore, so you might want to extend this recommendation to syndesmotic sprains. Pain management strategies such as over-the-counter pain medication or prescription pain medication may be used to alleviate pain and swelling. In contrast to lateral ankle sprains, a period of immobilization may be recommended to avoid excessive stress on the distal tibiofibular joint in the acute phase. The duration ranges from a few days to weeks and can be done with a cast or a brace. Physical therapy, including exercises to restore range of motion, strength and stability is an important part of the rehabilitation process for patients with syndesmotic injuries. In some cases, surgery may be required to correct a syndesmotic injury and restore stability to the affected joint. 
This may include procedures such as the synosmotic screw fixation, suture anchors, or synosmotic reduction and fixation. The decision to proceed with surgery will be based on the severity of the injury and the patient's overall health and rehab goals. After surgery, a period of non-weight bearing or forms of immobilizations may be used at the discretion of the surgeon. Rehabilitation is thought to be an important component of managing syndesmotic injuries and is typically started once the patient is pain-free and able to bear weight on the affected joint. Physical therapy, including exercises to restore range of motion, strength and stability, is an important part of the rehab process for patients with syndesmotic injuries. The rehab process may also include the use of assistive devices such as crutches or a brace to aid in the healing process and prevent re-injury. Note that research on rehabbing syndesmotic injuries is extremely scarce. The best research we currently have will be looking at lateral ankle sprains for advice. If you're interested, you can watch our video on the current ankle sprain guidelines. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. Make sure to check out our online courses on physiotutors.com. I am Max for Physiotutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.